I'm Peggy O'Neill and welcome to today's Facebook Live. It is Thursday, March the 24th, 2022. If you are here live, please uh, say hi. I love knowing that you're here. If you have any comments, questions at any time, please post them and I will answer them. And if you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay. I love knowing that you were here and uh, the same thing. If you have any comments, any questions at any time, I will answer them. So please post them. All right, now I am going to get my screen set up so I can see comments. Okay, so if you are here, say hi. So again, I'm Peggy O'Neill and um, this Facebook community is answering the call and the name means this. If we're still searching, hey Sharon, oh great, good. So happy you're here. Hey. Um, so the answering the call means, uh, from my point of view, two kinds of calls. If we're still searching a lot, we're not quite satisfied, there's something more, there's some meaning missing, something. That's a call. It's actually an invitation from ourselves, from source, if you will, because we are source. So it's an invitation to discover, to know who we essentially are, which we've talked about a lot here, that. And then once we're becoming established there, we, we're, you know, we're getting more that that's our home base, our essential nature of one being, then often we're still curious and a uh, consciousness source is still trying to express through us. And so we're, there's still, uh, uh, um, we're answering the call to know what is ours uniquely to express. And I love this saying, like a song, I mean a, a bird. A bird has its own song, each bird. So each of us does as well. We have our own song and we're here to express it, sing it. So today we're going to specifically talk about how to focus attention on peace and happiness consistently. How to focus attention on peace and happiness consistently. As we've talked about and as I just mentioned, we are source. We're one being. So that first call that we have is our invitation to come home to ourselves, to know our essential nature, our true being of one being, one with everything. And the human way that we talk about it or experience it is as peace, happiness, fulfillment, love, or another word for that could be just you know, this vast open space or peace or calm uh, or contentment is another word for it. That's the feeling quality. So, so once we know that that's who we truly are, then we want to, uh, and, uh, we're probably not used to hanging out there. That's for most of us, not our home base, especially when we uh, make this discovery, make this connection, knowing who we truly are. We're so used to being distracted in life by the activities, the objects, the things to do, our emotions, our thoughts, carry us away from that. We don't really realize it, but that's what's happening. So then what most of us do, if we're not feeling happy, we go do something to go make us happy. We hear that a lot too. I'm gonna go find a job that makes me happy. Well, often that happiness then comes and goes. So what we're talking about here is how do I stay consistently happy or content, peaceful? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. How do we stay consistent in that? Well, the first one is to believe, to really believe everything I just said, <laughs> that you're one being and that who you are essentially is this contentment, happiness, peace. If we don't believe that, it's going to be very hard to be consistent in experiencing happiness and peace. We're probably going to get thrown back into our traditional way, our conditioned way of doing it. Well, I'm not happy, so I'm going to go have a glass of wine, or I'm going to go watch a movie, or I'm going to go talk to my boyfriend, or I'm going to go have lunch with a girlfriend. None of those, there's nothing wrong with any of those. Of course, they're all beautiful, great experiences. But but if we do them to seek happiness, then we're, um, then, uh, that we think happiness is outside of us. And, and my, for most of us, we don't realize that's what we're doing, but that's what we, again, what we've been conditioned 
to do and to believe. So the first thing is, is to, to make that deep connection, to let it sink in. Wait, I am peace and happiness. I don't have to go anywhere to look for it. I don't have to do anything to create happiness. And I used to do that. I mean, I'd, I'd think, okay, I'm not feeling very good right now. What can I do? <laughs> I wanna, I'll watch a movie or read a book or, or do something because I want to feel better because I didn't know. But now that I know, the, so that's the first thing then is to believe that and then we can just sink back into it. That takes, while we're having this conversation today, it takes some consistency, some, some ongoing um, commitment to it. Like, like, you know, I really want to live this way, that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, and so we want to keep coming back there, keep coming back there, and that will be the next thing. And how do we stay consistent? But the first one, again, no repeating myself, but it's to believe it, not as a concept, that's why you've heard me say over and over again, if you've watched very many of these, you want to go check it out for yourself. You want to do what you, you know, what it, uh, you don't take my word for anything. Go check it out. Because without that experience, without that experiment, without you checking for yourself, oh yeah, I can sit there. One way to do it is to ask the questions, am I aware? pause and I'm aware that I am I aware that I'm aware we've talked about that before so I'm not going to spend time on it today but that's one way to do it and sure the first time it may take a month or two it may take a while before we really sense that sometimes people the first time they ask those questions oh yeah we can feel that but what we want to do is keep staying in that space so keep coming back to that keep coming back to that and one way to do that so that it becomes more natural, becomes more real, a lived experience for us is to ask those questions. Okay, so the first one is to believe it and to have at least experienced it, even for a second, at least once. Okay, so now, the, the second piece to this, I said how to focus. So, some of us aren't very good at focusing. Now, when I, ha I mean, I said us, I happen to be pretty good at it. Uh, I guess through experience or just my natural tendencies uh, and probably because of years of meditation and thing, I'm sure that, you know, so, but, so, but if you're not good at focusing, which most people are, I mean, just, you know, how many times do we pick up a phone? At, I mean, I, I, I've gotten a little off lately by going to look at my emails a lot or my phone. So, uh, so it can be a little challenging these days because we do have all these devices that are so attractive because we do get that happy hit. We get, oh, somebody emailed me. I get to find out what that is. So it's also being aware that that's what's happening um, and slowing that down uh, should we choose to. So, so if we're not good at focusing or we've gotten away from it, one thing to do is to sit and actually do meditation where you focus on your breath. If you've meditated before, you're familiar with that kind of meditation where you close your eyes, you find a, a you, you notice the breath coming in and out of your nose, or your belly moving, or where your breath moves in the belly. You pick one of those two places, the end of your nose or your belly, and put your attention there and say silently to yourself as you're meditating, in when you breathe in and out when you breathe out. That's one way to practice. I'm not a big fan of practicing these days, so you do it because you really want to live this way, not as a practice to get somewhere or to change something, but you realize, I want to really be good at focusing, so I'm going to do this because it supports how I want to live. So that's one way. Another one is to, uh, a lot of people have used a candle where you uh, light a candle and you just put your attention on it and meditate on the candle, so to speak, by focusing on the candle. Uh, you can say a mantra. I've never been one that said a mantra, but you could say a mantra. Uh, I'm sure there are other ways you could Google. How do I, you know, get better at focusing? Those are the three ways I have for you today. Now, if you've been with us for a while, then you might be going, that doesn't sound like a non-dual approach. And you're exactly right, because I'm encouraging you to focus on something that seems like it's outside of you, like an object. So now I'm creating a subject, me, and my breath, an object. A subject, me, and the candle. So now, but if you're not good at focusing, 
it's what you want to do. So it's not totally a non-dual way of, uh, of engaging with life, but as a concession to our historical conditioning and a concession to our separate self mind that is struggling to focus, that's fine, that's fine. And we, that's what we want to do to get better at focusing. So that's the second thing to do, uh, or the, uh, uh, yeah, the second thing to do to support us in being more consistent and being able to, um, uh, well, to stay consistent, we gotta focus. Okay, now how do we return our focus? Oh, another thing though, sorry, if you're struggling with focusing, just looked at my notes, realized, not look at the phone so much. Don't watch TV. TV is designed to keep us, keep our minds going. I don't know if you know this, but they started speeding up how fast people talk on shows to keep people's attention. So people talk faster on these TV shows than they did, let's say, five or ten years ago. They keep speeding it up. So TV is just set up to keep us distracted. So again, to be really good at focusing, don't watch much TV. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing to help us be consistent is to uh, remove our attention from whatever gets our attention. Remove our attention from if we start focusing on a TV or somebody's distracting us with their behavior, like we're getting annoyed by it, and it's taking us away from that peace and happiness because we're paying attention to that, or our thoughts or our feelings. What we can do is withdraw our attention from that. Again, if you've been with me before you've heard me tell the story, I'll make it brief about uh, how I learned to love my mom. So the universe gifted me what I'm about to tell you, you know, 12 or so years ago, I didn't, but I didn't have the nuance that I knew that I have now around the value of it and what I was really learning. But what I did is to focus on my mom. I did not focus on the thoughts about her because I had all kinds of opinions and judgments. And I didn't focus on my emotions that would, would arise when she would say things where she was trying, she was trying to make me mad. And she would tell me, don't you want to argue? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> love her, bless her. I did fall in love with her. So, but, but how I did it is I withdrew my attention from my thoughts. I withdrew my attention from her activities. I withdrew my attention from her, um, uh, from the emotions that I was getting, that were going, that were trying to rile me up, my emotions. So, and it was recently confirmed with some readings that I've done. So, I mean, reading books. So, um, so that's one way to do it. It's just when you're noticing that you're getting distracted and getting seemingly pulled away from peace and happiness, then remind yourself, oh, I'm withdrawing my attention from that. I withdraw my attention. I withdraw my attention. And, um, or some, some other way of saying that that works for you. You're turning away from that. Um, with me at that time, with my mom, I just kept saying to myself, she's divine, she's divine, she's a divine being, I love her, she's a divine being, I love her. Little bit not non-dual, but if that works for you uh, at the beginning of trying to be consistent with peace and happiness, then go for it, use, use that, what I used 12 years ago. So I think that is it. Um, so again, what the focus today is how to focus attention on peace and happiness consistently. So number one, you gotta believe that it's already there. It's who you are. It's not separate, it doesn't come and go. Uh, it's your true nature always. You've always had peace and happiness in the background whether you knew it or not. It's always there. In fact, we don't have it. It's just, it just is in the background. It's there always. So that's the first is to believe it and start accessing it with one way is to ask those questions. Am I aware? Am I aware that I'm aware? And to sit in that as long as you can until it becomes real. And then if you're struggling to focus, engage in those various practices of meditation. Don't watch TV. Don't get so caught up in email and whatever else is on the phone uh, or anything like that that we get, let ourselves get busy in that activity and then and then when we notice that we're getting pulled away seemingly pulled away our attention is going somewhere else to get us distracted then we remind ourselves oh come back you can say come back to peace and happiness you can say i withdraw my attention from what's happening from my emotions my thoughts withdraw attention i mean i'm withdrawing attention from what's going on out there whatever works for you 
along those lines. So I, that's it for today. Any questions, comments, Sharon, for me, focusing is about continuing to come back. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and so that's one way to do it too. It's just say, I come back, I'm coming back, I come back, I come back. Just as good, because it's the same thing as saying, I'm not going to focus on that. I'm not going to let that disturb my essential nature. And the more you do this, I promise you, the more you do this, and it can take months. I'm not saying it's a day-long thing or a week-long thing. With my mom, it took six or nine months. I wasn't keeping a journal at the time, so I don't know how long it took, but I, it was a while. So that's so. This, uh, even though I make it sound kind of simple here, maybe even kind of easy, it's not because we're so used to being focused on our thoughts and emotions and getting caught up earlier today. I, I think it took me probably, I was, just got myself kind of hyped up about a lot of things on my plate and did exactly this today. Uh, I said, withdraw my attention from everything and everyone. And uh, that's a longer story. But I, now that I said that, I'll, so that, I want to be a little careful with that. Everything, I withdraw my attention from everything and everyone. That doesn't mean you still stay present with whatever you're doing. So you can do it with while you're with other people. It doesn't mean you're withdrawing yourself from life. It's just, uh, it's just a way to say I'm not letting anything take me away from who I truly am. So you can say that as well. Draw my attention from everything and everyone. But it doesn't mean that you're distancing yourself from anybody or anything. It's not a distancing thing. It's not a, it's not a separation thing. It's not um, anything like that. You're still present with the other person. But you're, you're reminding yourself that who you are is this vast, open, empty space. So you're not getting pulled into that. So withdraw your attention. But it, I probably spent 20 minutes because I'd let myself get caught up in all the activities I had on my plate. And I just, and I, because it's so, it's, it's so, again, that's what I'm just telling you. It's challenging. It's challenging. That's okay. That's okay. Great. We get to, the more we do that, the easier we get these. And someday we will just stay most of the time in that open, empty, allowing space. And then an add on, and that's where our creativity, that's where the universe can work through us and really help us express that song that I mentioned at the beginning. So it's well worth it. Plus, the peace that we experience more and more often, more and more fully, more and more easily. So I encourage you to take this on and stick with it. Consistency, consistency. Sharon is also about releasing the thoughts and feelings that are not what we want to be. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, when we notice those thoughts, exactly what you're saying, Sharon, just, oh, I'm not going to think that. There's, again, there, you, know, it's not, you can use whatever words work for you. Oh, I'm not going to think that, or that's not true for me, or I'm not going to think that anymore. And, and whatever, that you don't let your thoughts and emotions and the activities distract you from you. You get to live your life. Not your, you know, your thoughts don't get to live your life for you. Your emotions don't. Other people don't. But we get to be the peace and the happiness that we truly are. So anything else? Oh, Tina's here too. Hi, Tina. Let's see. Tina, thank you, Peggy. My favorite technique is with candle. Thank you for clarifying keeping attention and mindful challenges. You're very, very welcome, Tina. And, and yeah, practicing with the candle, focusing on uh, to help us focus is great. Great. And uh, very welcome, Tina. It's great to see you. Thanks for being here. All right. Anybody else? Any comments, questions? And if you have any after you, you know, 10 minutes go or tomorrow, it gets to be tomorrow, and you have a question about this or a comment, please come back and I will answer anything. Thank you again for being here today. And we will continue to um, uh, more consistently stay in the peace and the happiness that we are. Have a great rest of your day.